already described this is step 1, 2 and 3. This we have already done in the morning. <coughs> yeah. Is this fine? One, two, three, or there is any question on this? Eh? Observations? Ko lekar? Ah, bataye. And I was an observation things that were running in our mind was all like I was planning for what I need to do after I go home and all those things. That was also one of the focus. So what is the bottom line feeling of this is, is it a feeling of anxiety or do I have the feeling of maybe responsibility? That you have to ask yourself. <coughs> When you are thinking of, you know, when I go home, I will, what will I do, right? You are planning for it. What is the feeling at the basis of that planning? She is asking whether it is, uh, what, what you said? Anxiety or responsibility. Yeah. So you have to ask yourself, what is it? If it is feeling of responsibility, then you will not get worried about it. If it is feeling of anxiety, it means there is some, yeah, some disharmony, right? some contradiction with the situation that you are thinking of. So that you have to decide, same situation and you are thinking of it, it may lead to anxiety or it may lead to a proper planning. If you have sense of responsibility, you will do the planning properly. For example, if I come to take this session and I have this feeling of relationship with each one of you, then I plan how to, you know, conduct this session in a meaningful manner. If I have a feeling of opposition, it will lead to a lot of worries. Same people, right? Same conditions, isn't it? That is very rare, very rare possibility. What it generally means is you are not able to observe your thought. That is generally the meaning of it. It is possible under certain very you know, specific circumstance that you do not have thought. But what is that condition we will see. But normally what is happening is that this thought are subtle and you are not used to see that subtle thing. When you start observing your imagination, what you are able to see in the beginning are the thoughts which are very agitated. When there is no agitation in the thought or there is harmony in the thought, you are not able to observe it because it is it has become now subtle. So these agitated thoughts are gross ones, right? When they are in harmony, they become subtle and you are not able to observe them. 
In fact, when you say peace, what is the meaning of peace? Peace has to do with the thought only. When there is harmony in your thought, when there are no contradiction in your thought, that is what is called peace. Right? So, when there are no contradiction, you find it difficult to observe it. It has become subtle. When there are agitations, you are able to see those thoughts. So, quite likely that you, the thoughts are there, they are peaceful, there are no contradiction in the thought, but you have not developed the capacity to observe the, that, that degree of subtleness. So, what do we do? Just keep, continue observing without reaction. So, if you are not able to see any thought, fine, let it be so, okay. Continue to observe your imagination without reaction. So, if you continue to observe without reaction, slowly you will develop the capacity. Your capacity to see your thoughts, your imagination will become more subtle as you go ahead. If you start reacting, then it will not work. So, just continue to observe without reaction. Then slowly you will be able to see that some thought is going on. You know, it is a harmonious thought. There are no contradiction in the thought. Right? Then you have to go beyond that thought and see what is the feeling behind these thoughts. That feeling is still subtle. That is why when you start observing, you first see the thoughts. Then as you go on observing and your subtlety increases, you are able to see your desire also, your feeling also. That is where we want to work. Once we are able to see the feeling, then we are asking this question whether this feeling is natural, unnatural. Okay. Is it naturally acceptable? Is it not naturally acceptable? Then we are asking whether this, with this feeling, we are in a state of harmony and happiness or we are in a state of contradiction and unhappiness. So that, you know, starting with the observation without reaction, and continuing with that observation will slowly make your capacity more subtle and subtle and you are able to see first the agitated thoughts, then even the peaceful thought, then the feeling behind it, then you can start evalua you know, evaluating your feelings. Okay. You had some. So. Ganeshi, actually, when I uh, started with this observation, usually it happens. Mostly I am in peace, I think. So I won't be having any thoughts. <laughs> then I think about this, then I may be connecting my thoughts with something. From there, I can connect it with some other thoughts. <coughs> so, will there be any subtle thoughts below this uh, imagination or something like that? Because initially, I am having a feeling I am not thinking about anything. Then I may be thinking about something, start thinking about something. It will be connected to some other thought. If it goes like that, will there be any subtle thoughts below these thoughts or... See, when you are very gross, you are not able to see even your agitated thoughts. What you are able to see? You are able to see the object of the thought. This thought is relating to some object, which is still more gross. Right? You get this idea? So, you are used to see gross things. 
So when you are not able to see the thought, you connect it to the object about which you are thinking, right? Which is more gross than this thought, okay? So you relate to that object, which is fine, you know, to begin with, you start with that object, then get to your thought, okay? Whatever thought you have about that object, then beyond that thought, there is some feeling relating to that object. So get to that feeling and then you can go ahead, right? So our main objective is not just focusing on the thought. Our main objective is to be able to see the feeling regarding that object or whatever that object I am thinking of, the feeling about that object and then work with the feeling. If I work with the feeling and if I set the feeling in order, right, then thoughts will be taken care of. <coughs> they can be taken care of. Yeah, you have some. Uh, when I try to observe, I am always asking what is my thought, what is my, only that is coming. Because uh, can we uh, uh, think about multiple things? I am always thinking, what is my thought? What is my thought? Only that is coming. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> I am observing have... whatever thought is going on in me. Right? I am not just asking this question, what is my thought? Some thought is going on. Right? And I am observing that thought. I mean, for example, this issue of mother-in-law, right? Whenever you recall of your mother-in-law, you feel very agitated, okay? Nothing has happened, okay? <laughs> now, what is happening there? Can I observe that thought about my mother-in-law that I am having at this moment? Then, can I see the feeling that I have about my mother-in-law? That's all we are saying, okay? Then, when I am able to see the feeling, can I ask this question? That feeling I have towards my mother-in-law, is it something natural, unnatural? Is it naturally acceptable? Is it not naturally acceptable? Then, step three, that feeling which I have about my mother-in-law, is it giving rise to a state of harmony and happiness within? Am I comfortable with that feeling? Am I uncomfortable with that feeling? Right? Is it leading to contradiction and unhappiness within? For example, if you have a feeling of opposition with your mother-in-law, right? Is it naturally acceptable to you? That feeling of opposition, is it naturally acceptable? No. Is it leading to a state of harmony and happiness? No. Are you comfortable with this feeling? No. This much I have to verify. And if I am able to verify this much, okay, I will be able to decide whether to continue with it or not to continue with it. So, if I find that this feeling is not naturally acceptable and that it is leading to unhappiness, contradiction, uncomfortability, I will simply not continue with it, right? As simple as that. Bhaiya, here. Uh, Ma'am has asked the question actually. So, if you are not able to concentrate on one particular thought, uh, if you are having multiple thought when you are when you are doing observation, so what is the state about it? And uh, it it has been like uh, whether we could not able to concentrate on one particular thought or whether we have to concentrate only on particular thought. Don't worry, you are a rich person. So many thoughts. <laughs> 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 so, few thoughts gone away, don't, don't worry, you know. <laughs> Whichever thought is persisting, work on it. Okay. 
uh, while we are doing meditation so we are concentrating on one particular point right so we are trying to connect with one particular point so when we are closing our eyes when you are uh, thinking about something so either we have to focus one particular thing or uh, we'll be having multiple thoughts right so we are not recommending <coughs> that you focus on one particular thought we are saying whatever thought is there at this point of time i am observing it whatever imagination is there at this point of time i am observing it whatever feeling is there at this moment of time i am observing it and this i am doing every moment in the process if there is a rush of thoughts and i miss some of them fine let them go no problem I am not going to chase them. The basic idea is not to count number of thoughts or trying to fix to one particular thought. The basic idea is that any given point of time, if there is an imagination, if there is a feeling at the base of this imagination, is that feeling natural and leading to happiness? right or is that feeling leading is unnatural and leading to unhappiness because that is what matters to me at this moment my happiness or unhappiness is my concern okay so if something has rushed through let it go right next moment i have to take care next moment i should be able to observe my thought i should be able to observe the feeling and i should be able to evaluate it right if i am able to observe and evaluate it i will be able to take a decision whether to continue with this feeling that is state of being or not so next moment if it is a feeling which is unnatural and leading to unhappiness i will not continue to with that feeling today what is happening you are thinking of your mother in law right and you have feeling of opposition and you are uncomfortable within right you are unhappy within and you continue with it for hours right for no good in a state of sleepiness and awareness if you become aware next moment at least you will get rid of it so your mother in law will not make you suffer <laughs> that is the idea yeah, for many of you daughter in law yes <laughs> it is the mother in law troubling you and 50 plus it is the son in law the daughter in law yes sir 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 in the morning when we were doing observation uh, i could see that i have concern for my daughter she is at my sister's place and uh, yesterday uh, they called and said that the whole day she is okay but in the nights she is crying so i became concerned about her but that time even though it was feeling of relationship i became uncomfortable with it then i thought i will look into it more then i could see this is happening because i am over evaluating her then i went further and i could see it is actually otherwise evaluation like i am only considering her body like that i thought um then um i was not able to get what is the feeling it was not a position that i could see but now you were saying that uh, it may be for uh, situations so now i have uh, this uh, a position for situation that why did we decide that she will go there and i will come here but how to come out of this i could not see the way yeah and you know it is also a lack of confidence in your relative <laughs> you think that she cannot take care 
of her. Right? So if you had that confidence, that trust on that your sister-in-law, okay, then there was no problem. Isn't it? See, all these are things are quite connected, you know. So one you are over evaluating, right? And second, you are under evaluating the competence of that mother, sister in law, or whatever, you know, the relative you are talking about. Otherwise, what was the problem? And this, you know, this is small, small thing. If she is finding it difficult to sleep without you, and if she really, she really needs a sleep for her body, then she will go to sleep. Don't worry. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Sir, beyond that what happened, I left that point there and I told myself she will manage. But then while I was asleep, I had her dreams and in my dreams I was very much worried. And the day before yesterday also I had her dreams only but in my dreams also I was seeing that she is playing and she is comfortable. So now my problem is even if I am stopping thinking about her, it comes in the dream and that gets extended. So yeah, so <laughs> this, this imagination during the dream and the imagination during the daytime, they are of the same type. We should not think that this is something different. It is after all your imagination. You, you understand this? This you will realize slowly that what you see in the dream and what you see in the daytime is not qualitatively different. The only difference is that in the daytime you are taking some input from outside, while you are sleeping you are not taking input from outside. Otherwise that imagination part is same. So you have that worry for her. In daytime, you are busy with so many other things, okay? So it is not surfacing. In the night, when you are sleeping, means you are not taking a lot of input from outside. Then that same worry is continuing. So it is not a dream in the sense that it is some other world, same world. That is what is your state of being. In fact, many things become more clear during the dream time, you know, the sleeping time. So, daytime you recall, you know, oh, I have to be aware and evaluate, you know, and all that. So, you stop that. But then, you have really not handled it. It is continuing with you. But good, I would say. It is good that now you are becoming aware of your state of imagination even while you are sleeping. For your daughter, so both are in coval and bonds. So here, Unable to control the feelings of our, based on the love and affection. Is it correct? Sir? We have to understand, you know, this love, affection are the right feelings and they need not necessarily lead to worry. I, I gave one possible reason, you know. Two possible reasons we discussed. One is the lack of right evaluation of the daughter, you know. Second is lack of right evaluation of the relative with whom I have left the daughter, right? And all these things keep happening everywhere unless you are very careful. Yes. 
Kumar bhaiya I am really sorry morning you said like when i am imagining you are forcing the thoughts you are absolutely right so when i started to imagine now i first remembered you because you said you should not force the thoughts okay let me leave something come when i ask ma'am if no thoughts come what to do okay then i sleep but sleep also today it's not coming for me from morning <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was it tra- took me travel to something maybe i love nature or not today is the first day i was able to see a forest of coconut tree in my thoughts i am traveling 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 i am traveling through the lush of coconut tree it's fully you have sunshine and then it's becoming fully darker i don't know how many kilometers i am traveling all coconuts are falling down but you can't eat any one of them in real life i can take so there i am not getting any agony or hatred i cannot eat so what does this this feel signify finally i came out of that forest of coconut tree this is the first time i am able to visualize without any force or anything connecting myself i just close the eyes let something come like that i close the eyes yes go ahead yes it is you know i i was just responding to her saying that you are a rich person you know you so many imaginations going on so don't worry about them let them go okay if it has gone fine finish let's now look at the next one see the interesting thing is that Yeah but see this is what i'm saying that if there is some imagination going on <laughs> let it be there okay what i want to extract out of it is the feeling which is there at the base of that imagination right because it is that feeling which is going to make me happy or unhappy so that is my concern at this point of time so if i see through all this you know what was the base of it what was the feeling the feeling was that nature is all in harmony in all relationship if that was the feeling fine you know if the feeling was that you know there is so much of trouble in nature you know so much of uncertainty you don't know which coconut will fall in your head right then it was a feeling which is going to create unhappiness for you okay <laughs> so if this and this is very interesting you know this coconut falling from the tree so to from such a height okay <laughs> if you <laughs> do not have confidence in the nature it is very risky to walk below the tree you know by a generally my mother in law says that uh, we call it tennam pillai in tamil coconut child so it will never fall and hurt anybody usually it will fall when nobody is around only <laughs> i mean that's there's something very interesting you know to think that thousands of this you know uh, coconut is falling from that height and people are working we need that and it never falls on the head of the people so much of harmony in nature isn't it bhaiya bhaiya you said that uh, dreams are bhaiya here dreams dreams are some imaginations which you have over the day time 
and that is reflecting over there so what is your view Not about reflecting over there i am uh, saying the same kind of imagination imagination ah, that's what is uh, yes in dream day as well as in dream imagination so what is your view regarding uh, the visions that sadhus have sadhus um saints <coughs> Mm. so we you know this when you start looking at your imaginations there are very subtle things happening there these subtle things can happen because of something you saw from outside or your thought has some effect from some other activity taking place somewhere and the subtle reflection of it so how subtle you are able to observe so all this thing that we talk about you know about the sense and all only thing is they have developed that capacity to see the subtle changes in their own thought which is taking place because of the effect of the incidences or some sort thought taking place somewhere else so you can read through those thoughts which are causing this effect or those incidences which are causing effect on your thought but then you have to develop that subtlety to observe but we are not getting into those presently we are saying whatever is happening in me at the level of imagination let me start observing first we may start very gross ones okay then slowly we also will develop that capacity to see the subtle ones bhaiya you just now said that love and affection need not let you worry uh, but generally we worry lot about only the people whom we love the most let's say let me take for example my daughter is taking her two wheeler to go to college till she reaches the college the thought that goes on in myself is that uh, she should be safe and uh, you know she should reach safely to the college without anything happening to her and uh, the reason why i tell her that as soon as you reach you need to call me or message me saying that you reached college is because of the love and affection i have for her so for her means for her or for her body for her body as well as for the self <laughs> bhaiya because if she is going to <laughs> get hurt then she might fear and never take her bike out again that has also happened in my family <laughs> so we have to be clear about all these you know we think she means the body she will meet an accident means the body will meet an accident right so how do we not worry about the people whom we love the most by if i for people who towards whom i have no feelings i don't worry about them at all <laughs> if you start looking at her as self you will work to make her responsible make her understand the reality as it is right that is what you will do make her confident of herself right responsible all that i will do not worry <coughs> if i see her as a self i will do whatever i have to do in order to develop that right understanding and right feeling in her so that whether he is driving a scooty or not driving a scooty she is in a high state of harmony and happiness what am i doing for that that is why ne- what i need to do as my you know love affection and love for her am i doing that if i am doing that i can be confident that she is always safe whether she continues to have a body or not continue to have a body she has the right feeling right understanding okay and therefore she will be in a state of harmony and happiness always am i doing that out of my affection and love for her bhaiya what actually affected my thing was i used to be like that and i always know that she is a good driver but uh, during holi me and my daughter were actually she was only driving and uh, we were going on the road suddenly something happened uh, two two boys in bikes they just came parallelly across and we were in a subway uh, 
it was dark in the night and they threw some color powders so suddenly she couldn't see properly so like it was a very difficult point of time but still she was able to manage so i knew that she was a good driver but after that incident i do not know whether she got afraid or i got afraid but i got very afraid every time she takes the bike out <laughs> thinking of even though that you know you are actually she handled it very well i was the one who got very scared <laughs> but see this is what i am saying i want to have continuity in a thing which is of the nature of changing you have to start understanding all these things you know uh, we were discussing the first or second day if you want continuity in something which is of the nature of changing it will not have the continuity okay and you will always be in trouble you don't understand what has continuity and how that continuity can be ensured right you are not looking into that you are not working for it so will continue to be worried so i made this proposal that if i look at her as the self then out of my feeling of concern for her i will work for developing right understanding and right feeling in her if i can do that then she will always have that right understanding and right feeling there will be no accident with the self with the body still there may be an accident you are not going anywhere you are sitting and this roof can fall on your head what will you do i can always worry right yeah i say you know this roof is weak it can fall down on your head any time but you don't worry you attend to the class okay it can always happen eh that is the problem so yeah i remember we were going from delhi to uh, bagdogra bagdogra you know bagdogra is in uh, siliguri yeah. west bengal and half way this there is an announcement it says that this plane instead of going to bagdogra we are going to uh, calcutta okay because one of the uh, side this thing wheel is jam so it will be you know a kind of forced landing and when it is landing it is likely to get you know stuck so it it you know might catch fire okay so we may need the help of uh, this fire brigade and all those things so we will have to go to calcutta instead of bagdogra but you don't worry we are with you <laughs> 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 now what do you do no problem the body is of the nature of changing this may happen with it any time right so we didn't worry about it and it went to calcutta it landed there the driver the pilot was very trained he safely landed it without any fire lot of this fire brigade were there all around that's it if it had accident it had an accident that's it what else can you do even if you worry eh you should pray god even otherwise not when you are going to meet an accident <laughs> this is the interesting thing if you if you recall coexistence harmony and relationship every moment right all the time you are happy all the time you are happy that is what we are saying you know remember this basic 
law of existence, coexistence, harmony and relationship. Remember it every moment. Ensure that all your feelings are in line with coexistence, harmony and relationship. Then you are guaranteed happiness every moment. So you don't have to remember only when you are meeting an accident. Okay. How much time we are left with? 20 minutes. Okay. What I will do is step 4 and 5 we have worked on. Okay. I will just briefly mention this step 4 and 5 so that you can continue working on it. Okay. In step 4, we are asking that if I have a feeling at this moment, okay, let us say feeling of opposition with someone who has taken the decision for this feeling. There are three possibility. One is I have taken the decision. Second, somebody else has taken the decision. Third, some circumstances has taken the decision, right? What is it? Let us see. Else or the situation outside decided it. So, let us bring in this law again. You know. So, you recall your mother-in-law and you have a feeling of opposition for her, right? Now, who decided this feeling of opposition for the mother-in-law? The mother-in-law decided? No, she does not know about it, okay? The circumstances around decided it? No, you only decided it, right? Yes. Like this happened in 2007 when I traveled through electric train, uh, the stop came actually where I need to get down, that I forgot. So once the train is starting, I came to know that I need to get down. So two thoughts are there, in, that is from my own self or what I wanted to know. One thought is telling you get down, your stop is, uh, stop went off and then you need to get down. One. One thought is telling, don't get down. But finally, I got down. I met with an accident. And then uh, <clears throat> they recovered and then they admitted in hospital. Like a like heavy wound on my head. But still, uh, nobody came near to me. Then one flag, uh, people took me to the hospital. So still now, every time, whenever I think, I know that I should not get down. But still, one mind is telling you, your stop is going, you just get down. So, two thoughts are coming. So, it uh, it up for uh, other incidents also. One mind will, that is from my own self, no. So, the myself is affecting my body in this regard or uh, good thought and bad thought are uh, like that, that situation. I think always this particular thing. If a fraction of a second, I am in a position to decide. You know, interestingly, this train, Bande Bharat, new train has come. Yeah, we traveled. <laughs> you have heard of it? Yes. Yeah. Good thing about that train is that before Tages it are. starts, the doors are closed. Uh. So, you don't have to decide now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Achha, so even metro does that, huh? Yeah. Fortunately or unfortunately, I have not travelled in a metro, is it? So, see, these are simple decisions. We don't, we are not able to make it because we have not worked on ourselves. If we start working on ourselves, you can see that, okay, what is the problem? If I don't get down at this stop, I will get down at the next stop. What will happen? The TT may come and say, where is your ticket? You know, you are supposed to go last stop only. Okay. 
He will put some fine. What is the problem? Most probably he will not put a fine. I can tell you. 95% you tell him, you know, that I had this problem. I couldn't get down. 95% he will not, pay, you know, put a fine. But if he puts a fine, fine, you know, pay. After that it. incident that happened to me also, I slept actually two times. Then I traveled to the next station uh, that I, I, they didn't ask for fine. They left. Uh, but that also, after that incident, maybe. Like, uh, that was the first time that happened. Still always when I travel, I remember this incident. See, these kind of things are happening because we are not being aware of ourselves. We are not able to be confident of ourselves. Okay. Otherwise, these are very small, small incidents, right? I mean, just imagine 70 people sitting here and asking all kind of questions, right? <laughs> if you have some clarity about yourself, you can be very comfortable with all the 70 people, right? And they can ask any question about themselves, about their mother-in-law, their son, daughter-in-law, everyone, right? Yeah, their train accident and everything. Okay, so the important thing to observe in step 4 is that whenever there is a feeling in me regarding anyone or any unit, the ultimate decision is taken by me. I will take one example and explain, you know. Suppose somebody uses some abuse, okay? Somebody is using an abusive word, okay? And I feel insulted, okay? And I have a feeling of opposition for that person who is using an abusive language. Who is responsible for this feeling? Who is deciding for this feeling of opposition with the person who is using an abusive language? I am taking an extreme case because that will make it more clear you know, for you. Yeah, think. Who is responsible? So this we have to work out. I'll explain, you know. Suppose he is using an abusive language and you do not know that language. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come to that. I'll come to that. So, what is happening is that he is pronouncing some words, and those words are falling in on your ear, right? There is some sensation on the ear, ear, and you read those sensation, right? So, some sound you are listening. Then you are giving some association to that sound as some word and some abusive word, right? You are giving meaning to that. On the basis of that meaning that you have given to that sound, right? You are concluding something about the other person. Okay? Then on the basis of that conclusion about the other person, you are generating a feeling for a feeling of opposition for him. In the process, if you come to know that he, this person is suffering from high fever, 
right? This is possible. When people suffer from high fever, they lose control, you know, and they can start shouting, you know. What will you do? You will have a feeling of opposition for him? No. That means, given the same situation, your feeling may be different for the same person, right? Pronouncing the same kind of words. So, ultimately, it is my decision, right? Now, take a different case. Baya, what if, what if, if he is not suffering from that? I will come to that. <laughs> In second case, out of my right understanding, I have a feeling of relationship for everyone and therefore care for everyone. And if I find that somebody is using an abusive language, right, I will have a pity, feeling of pity for him or feeling of, feeling of opposition for him. What will happen? Nancy. <laughs> Because I can see that people use abusive language when they are suffering. They may not be suffering physically, they are suffering mentally. Isn't it? I was asking this in the morning. When does a mother shout at the child? When she is comfortable within, uncomfortable within? Uncomfortable within, right? So if somebody is shouting, using abusive language, right? He or she is uncomfortable within or comfortable within? So, if I can see this, whether I will have a feeling of opposition or feeling of pity. So, ultimately the decision is on me, in regard of what is the circumstance from outside. Isn't it? So, <laughs> so, you can ask any type of question, right? I always give you that margin because you are what you are, right? You can ask any type of question in a way you want, right? In a language, in a manner, you know, all that. But that does not mean that you are not respecting me or you are insulting me. What you are saying, the way you are saying is telling about you. And if I have feeling of relationship with you, I will feel responsible, I will listen to you, right? With that feeling of relationship, I will try to understand what is the state of your being? What is your question? What reality you are talking about? What part of that reality you already know? What you want to know? Right? All that I will try to extract. And with that sense of responsibility, I will respond. And when I respond, I first try to help you identify the object that we are talking about. Number one. Number two, I try to reassert that you have you already know so much about this reality. Then I try to connect to you to the remaining part of the reality which you feel concerned about. If I do all this, you are yourself able to see the remaining part of the reality. And that is how you get the answer. And you feel confident. So not only that you get answer to your question now, but you feel confident that if I pay attention and if I start seeing things through certain process, I will be able to understand the reality myself. And that is what is important. Yes, so this step four is very significant, I would say. To keep asking yourself that in any interaction, right, when I am having a feeling in me, Okay, who is deciding that feeling? The other person, the situation, or ultimately it is me who is deciding my feeling. 
because if I can see that it is me ultimately who is deciding the feeling, then I am responsible for my feeling. And this feeling is leading to happiness or unhappiness. Therefore, I am responsible for my happiness or unhappiness. That clarity should come that if I am happy, I am responsible for it. If I am unhappy, I am responsible for it. Given the situation, whatever it is, in terms of other human being, in terms of the physiochemical conditions, ultimately I am responsible for my feeling and therefore my happiness or unhappiness. Therefore, I am 100% responsible for my happiness, 100% responsible for my unhappiness. So, work on this from now onward till tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning when we come, we will get back to this.